this edition of Travel with Kids Hawaii, come along with us as we discover Hawaii's whaling history and ride a train through Maui's sugarcane past in Lahaina. Check out Maui by Water on an exciting snorkel tour and a sunset cruise. And by land on the winding road to Hana and beautiful Kaanapali Beach. Along the way, we'll talk to a scuba diver underwater, fly a kite, send a coconut postcard, feed some koi fish, and learn to hula. We're arriving in Maui's less popular Kapalua Airport on the west side of the island. The 45-minute flight by prop plane from Kona on Hawaii's Big Island makes for a mini-adventure and lands us just minutes from our hotel in Kaanapali. This is Kaanapali Beach on Maui's west coast. Known for its blue skies and sunny days, this long strip of white sand beach is a perfect base for exploring all of Maui's exciting attractions. We're staying here at the Sheraton Maui, located next to Black Rock. The area is known for its safe swimming and excellent snorkeling. With its beachfront location and long list of kids' activities, the Sheraton is a great place for families. From here, the day trips we have planned around Maui and the mini vacation across the channel to the less traveled island of Molokai should be relatively easy. The ferry leaves just south of here in Lahaina. Lahaina is the center of all things Maui. Once the home to the Maui royalty and the capital of the whaling industry, Lahaina now plays host to a range of interesting shops, restaurants, and galleries. With its idyllic waterfront setting and old wooden storefronts, Lahaina maintains an air of old world charm. Lahaina's tourist area is centered around a broad town square covered by the largest banyan tree in the United States. Many of Lahaina's attractions are clustered around this square, making it an ideal town to explore with kids. Before moving to Honolulu, Lahaina was the capital of the Kingdom of Hawaii. Nowadays, it makes a perfect place to take a break from the beach, do some window shopping, and check out some historic sites. Lahaina is a traveler's delight. Narrow streets with interesting boutiques and galleries radiate out from this park where a giant banyan tree forms a natural umbrella. The kids love playing around the huge roots of the tree. I'm in jail! Help, I'm in jail! And with the open-air craft market, concerts, and nearby attractions, it's a great place for us, too. Plan on using the Banyan Tree Park as a base to check out Lahaina. After exploring some of the town's attractions, the old missionary home, the old courthouse, and the ruins of a fort, we can grab an ice cream and come back here and relax under the tree listening to live local music. Lahaina's colorful history is interesting for the whole family. The old courthouse weaves intriguing tales of whalers. And the nearby waterfront is bustling with stands selling boat tours and adventures under the sea, like Atlanta Submarine. Dive 130 feet deep into the blue to explore Hawaii's coral reefs and marine life from the comfort and safety of an underwater boat. At the end of the waterfront is the Molokai Ferry Dock. The boat leaves twice a day giving adventurous travelers the chance to get off the beaten path. Molokai offers a look at what Hawaii was like decades ago with quiet valley hikes, deserted beaches, and rural communities. Next to the Molokai ferry dock in Lahaina, the rustic-looking whaler boat, the Carthaginian, sways with the incoming surf, conjuring up all sorts of images of Hawaii's past. The 19th century brought many foreigners to Hawaii, 
missionaries, plantation workers, and whalers, the mix of which changed the Hawaiian culture immeasurably. Evidence of these new influences can be seen throughout the islands. White clapboard churches built by missionaries stand tall next to Buddhist temples and shrines erected by Chinese and Japanese immigrants. Lahaina's whaling history makes for an interesting tale of opposing forces. In the early 1800s, two foreign influences would steam into Lahaina. The whalers, seeking a break from the Pacific bouts with their nemesis of the sea, and the missionaries, looking to spread the word and clean up the island. After converting the island's governor, the missionaries' influence grew, and laws were passed against drunkenness and womanizing and raging the whaler community. After the governor's death, laws were relaxed, and hundreds of whale ships poured into port. Years later, when the whaling industry collapsed, Lahaina became the capital of Maui's sugar industry. The sugar cane train, used to carry the cane from the fields to Lahaina's mill, still operates today, although it transports Lahaina's newest economic driver, tourists. We're ready to board the sugar cane train. Our little Thomas the Tank Engine enthusiasts are thrilled. The sugar cane train winds its way down six miles of Maui's west coast, across a 325-foot wood trestle bridge with excellent views of the island's coastline and the ocean beyond. The kids are having so much fun riding the train and pointing out all the scenery. When the train stops at a water tower to fill up, the kids get to see it let off some steam. It's a lot of fun, like riding it, because you get to see a lot of stuff. It's just like an adventure, but you're on a train. Today we're heading out by boat to the nearby island of Lanai to discover Hawaii's incredible undersea world. Pacific Whale Foundation runs exciting snorkeling and whale watching excursion in the waters around Maui. They offer visitors a chance to mingle with marine life while encouraging education and conservation. The staff at the Pacific Whale Foundation is great with the kids. They make sure we all get plenty of breakfast goodies and juice and they really listen to the kids, happily answering all their questions. The staff is so knowledgeable about the ocean and point out wildlife as we go. Before we even reach Lanai, we spot a group of spinner dolphins. The captain stops the boat so everyone can get a good look at these wonderfully graceful animals. I can't believe how high they can jump and spin. Once we get into the calm waters off the coast of Lanai, everyone is fitted for fins and a mask. They station kayakers in the water to answer questions and make sure everyone is safe. They even have boogie boards and life vests to make it easier for the kids. The large platform at the back of the boat makes getting in and out of the water a breeze. Or for the more adventurous, they have a really cool water slide. The underwater life is spectacular big schools of colorful fish, coral swaying in the current, and the sheltered bay makes the water really smooth so the kids aren't worried about jumping right in. After snorkeling, it's time to eat. Hamburgers and chicken grilled up fresh right on board and plenty of snacks. After lunch, we look at pictures of the marine life that we may have seen in the water, and the staff answers questions. They even have a special class for kids where they learn about life under the waves and what they can do to help in the conservation efforts. As we head back to Maui, our dolphin friends come by one last time to say goodbye. This trip has been great fun for the whole family. We saw dolphins. They spin up in the air and they look funny. We went snorkeling and saw a lot of fish. And I learned all about 
um, water and how fishes can swim and stuff. The Pacific Whale Foundation piqued the kids' interest in Hawaii's ocean animals, so we're going to head over to Maui Ocean Center to learn more. Located on Maui's south coast, Maui Ocean Center displays a unique collection of Hawaiian marine life. At Maui Ocean Center, there's a huge tank with an acrylic tube cutting through it. We can walk right through and are surrounded by all kinds of sea creatures. Like sharks, rays, all sorts of fish. and scuba divers. Twice a day we have divers go into the water in our open ocean exhibit. The star of the show is actually Hihi Manu, our spotted eagle ray, who likes to come up and take clams from our diver's hand. The divers in the tank interact with the audience, talking to the kids about all different animals here and answering questions. They feed the rays right next to the window so everyone can get a good look. I can talk to the scuba diver. Look at my lips are purple. This big aquarium is a big hit with the kids, but we're told the smaller tanks in the Living Reef exhibit will give us a closer look at some of Hawaii's amazing sea creatures. There are lots of different types of tropical fish, crabs, and other sea life in all different colors and shades. The octopus is a big hit with its tangle of legs rippling around its squishy body. The kids especially like the garden eels who slide in and out of their holes. These tanks with magnifying glasses give the kids an up-close look at some of the ocean's tiniest creatures. And the tide pools just outside give the kids a chance to feel some of these smaller creatures. Thorny sea urchins, bumpy starfish, and slimy sea cucumbers. Nearby, the kids have a bang-up time checking out a tank full of hammerhead sharks. And across the walk, everyone's favorite, sea turtles. One of our most important animals that we have here at Maui Ocean Center are the endangered green sea turtles. For many years, they were hunted to near exploitation. Uh, here at Maui Ocean Center, we care for uh, a few turtles at a time. They were born at Sea Life Park. We raised them for a couple of years, and then we released them out into the wild. Ever since protection efforts started, green sea turtles have made an incredible comeback here in Hawaii. Inside the Whale Discovery Center, we learn all about Hawaii's gentle giants of the sea. Learn about humpback whales and their migration to the Hawaiian Islands. Whales swim right here, that's where whales swim. And Hawaii's culture and history. One of the most important tips, be sure to leave time in your schedule for flexibility. We saw a goofy golf place on the way in, so we're going to stop in for some fun in the sun. And the perfect Hawaiian treat, Hawaiian shave ice. A scrumptious bowl of finely shaved ice topped with sweet syrups. Today we're going to take a break from Maui's many attractions to take advantage of our beachfront location and the activities here at our hotel. First we're going to stop by the koi pond here at the Maui Sheraton where it's breakfast time for the fish. The kids get to hand feed the huge koi fish. Their big sucker mouths bubble at the surface causing all sorts of giggles and funny faces. Next, it's time to meet the hula teacher for lessons on swinging the grass skirt. They start out swaying side to side, slowly waving their arms. But when the local girls start strutting their stuff and Nathan's not sure what to do, 
but the teacher gives him some good tips and he's on his way. They even get a chance to practice with the poi balls. Well, the fish are full, we're done in school, and now we're gonna do what many of us forget to do on these activity-packed vacations. Relax. The Sheraton Maui is located directly on the sand on Maui's famous Ka'anapali Beach. The powder-like sand and warm Pacific waters here are sheltered by black rock, making for relatively calm water and great visibility. Equipment can be rented from the activity desk at the Sheraton for a wide array of beach and water activities. The water here is so clear and calm. You can wade out beyond the breaking waves for excellent scuba diving and snorkeling. Above the water, people ride the waves on surfboards and boogie boards, and teenagers compete in bold shows of daring, diving off black rock. The beach here is so incredibly soft, almost the consistency of flour, perfect for building sand castles. Right next to the beach, the Sheraton has a big oceanfront pool with a lagoon-like atmosphere with rocks, bridges, and waterfalls. Every day at sunset, a Hawaiian runs up Black Rock, lighting all the torches in a reenactment of an ancient ceremony. At the top, silhouetted in black, surrounded by a halo of bursting orange and yellow rays, he lifts his lei, offering it to the spirits in each direction. In a dramatic ending, he throws his lei and torch to the water, then leaps into the ocean in a graceful dive. A perfect vantage point for this ceremony is the Sheraton's Luau. Set on an open grassy area next to the beach, the luau offers panoramic views of the sunsets over Black Rock and the Pacific Ocean. As the sun sinks into the ocean and the glowing golds give way to a ruby red, hula dancers give lessons on how to twist your hips and move your arms in traditional Hawaiian style. Just before the sunset, the emu ceremony begins. The host explains how the pig is cooked in an underground oven surrounded by hot rocks, banana and tea leaves and sand. During the emu ceremony, the pig is unearthed and prepared to serve. The luau gives the family a chance to learn about Hawaiian culture and taste some of the indigenous flavors. The performers present a variety of dances from all the different Polynesian cultures that have influenced Hawaii. From traditional hula dances to tribal slap dances. To the suspense of the Samoan fire dancers. The kids are having so much fun putting into action all the hula moves they learned earlier today and making lots of new friends. Today we're heading out to Maui's east side to drive the infamous Road to Hana. One of the most spectacular drives in all of Hawaii. We're told a convertible is the way to go on the Road to Hana. So we're renting a Jeep from Kihei Car Rental to fully enjoy the experience. Winding along sheer ocean front cliffs and back into lush valleys, the road to Hana is dotted with tumbling waterfalls, lookouts, one lane bridges spanning bubbling streams, and fantastic vistas. Though the road between Kahului and Hana covers only about 30 miles, with dozens of hairpin turns winding around blind corners and all the scenic stops, plan on taking a full day. In Paia, old wooden plantation-style buildings have been converted to boutiques and cafes. We stop at a local deli that boxes up picnic lunches for visitors to enjoy at some picturesque settings on the way to Hana. With our picnic lunch all packed up, we're ready to head out. 
Just after Paia, the road starts to narrow and wind through the lush valleys that line the coast. The bamboo grows so tall, it bends over the road waving at us as we drive by. Thick moss covers the steep cliffs that line one side of the road, and the other side drops into a tumble of boulders to the ocean or a stream bed below. With the wind blowing through our hair and the sun shining on our shoulders, this Jeep is a definite bonus. With the top down, we can really get a sense of the towering cliffs and tunnel shape of the trees. Lookouts along the way provide lots of little breaks and excellent views. After about an hour of driving, a flat peninsula juts out from the cliffs into the ocean, home to a small agricultural community with a church and taro fields. Nearby, a waterfall with a picnic area provides the perfect setting for our lunch. Water tumbles down the side of a cliff into a secluded pool tucked among the lush green of the jungle. Fuchsia flowers on tall green stalks wave gently in the breeze, beckoning us. After lunch, we hop across the rocks in the stream bed for a closer look at this little paradise before we venture ahead. A few miles before Hana, at the Wainapa Napa State Park, we discover a sampling of all things Hawaii. Black sand beaches, lava tube caves, temple ruins, and much more. The path down to the caves winds through thick woody vegetation that grows over the trail and all around us. A narrow path leads off the main trail, squeezing between tall stands of wild flowers, ending at huge caves filled with seawater. I found a hole in the cave. Bring a snorkel and a flashlight to explore the caves further. Below the caves is a small cove covered by jagged cliffs. The black sand beach here is scattered with tumbled boulders and grottoes. Black sand. The water here can get very rough and is not suitable for swimming. Blacker rocks over there and a cave right there. But be sure to explore the lava tubes that lead off the beach, opening with dramatic views of the turbulent waters. Just a bit more driving and we reach Hana, a rural town with a distinctly Hawaiian feel. Hana has escaped the development that has changed the face of many of Hawaii's beach towns, mostly due to the winding, narrow road. Small wooden buildings are spread across lush landscapes, and there's not a building in sight over two stories tall. A road down to the coast brings us to a beachfront park where local boys jump from docks while others hang out on the beach or play ball in the park. The verdant and dramatic landscape dotted with bright tropical flowers and white waterfalls and streams has made a nice Hawaiian day. But now it's time to head back to the hotel to view the island from a different angle on a sunset cruise. A short stroll down the narrow boardwalk that runs the length of Ka'anapali Beach lands us at the departure point for Trilogy. Boarding passengers right off Ka'anapali Coast, Trilogy makes a convenient sunset cruise option for guests staying at nearby hotels. Sailing aboard brand new custom designed catamarans, guests are treated to a two hour tour of Maui's west coast. The boat heads out for a brisk sail in the Molokai Channel, flying over huge waves. The kids have fun bouncing around on the trampoline at the front of the boat, white water spraying up at them, dousing them with the taste of the Pacific. They even have a chance to steer. Here's our new captain, Nathan. He's got a captain's name, Captain Seamus. After an hour or so in the big waves of the channel, the captain heads back to the calmer waters near the coast to watch the sunset. The water is so calm and clear. 